sorry. He was on and he is on, yes. So yeah, he's on. Everybody okay? I would go ahead. Welcome everybody. I'd like to call the town meeting to order. You want a roll call? Yes. Chairman Paynesa? Here. Commissioner Daly? Here. Commissioner Beach? Here. Commissioner Arsimowitz? Commissioner Erickson? Here. Commissioner um, Arsimowitz is coming up now. Okay. We do the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, yeah, why don't we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You can read the public notice, please. Okay, I'm going to read the legal notice, but also anybody who just came in. There are packets here of the red line of the charter explaining what has been taken out and what is going to be put in. All right. So if anybody would like that, there's some right here and there's a whole pile over there. All right. For the legal notice, a public hearing of the Charter Revision Commission will be held on June 14th, 2022 in the Town Council Chambers, Burlington Town Hall, 240 Kensington Road, Berlin, Connecticut at 6 p.m. for the purpose of receiving both written and verbal comments of all interested citizens of the Bur of Berlin regarding the proposed revision of the town charter, or the Berlin charter. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I wanna thank everybody for coming out tonight. Hope you offer your opinions, be respectful, try to limit your comments to three minutes or less because I think we have a lot of people that wanna offer their ideas. We wanna hear everybody. Um, Turning it off, Phil, do you want to give us an overview of the changes, please? Well, if he's not available, maybe I can try. Do you want to start with um, Attorney Mednick because he has the, um, he's done the Board of Education and that starts at the beginning of the. Uh, All right, that's the first change that we're going to look at. Yeah. All right, uh, Attorney Mednick, would you give us an overview of the Board of Education change? Happy to do so, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much and um, nice to see everybody and welcome to members of the public. Um, what we're recommending in the Board of Education is that we move from the current structure of a um, petition only Board of Education to a more traditional um, partisan uh, Board of Education that, that is elected under Title IX of the general statutes. Under Title IX of the general statutes, you would have candidates of major and minor parties, as well as petitioning candidates who would be eligible to run. Uh, the reason there's a lot of verbiage in this section is you need to move from um, the current board and it will take us um, a couple of years to get through the current membership to kind of equalize their terms so that they can all end their terms on a 
similar date. And then you have to open the accordion back up and start um, filling in the new body. The new body would be elected in, um, I believe, 2025. All nine members would be elected, um, five of them for four years, two of them for two years. And then in the next election cycle, two years later, um, you would elect the four members for a complete four-year term, and you would then establish the stagger uh, in the body. And um, that is the reason there's so much verbiage. Most of it has to do with transitional language that would come out of the charter as soon as the commission, as the Board of Education is fully in effect. It doesn't change the duties of the Board of Ed. Those are governed by state law. It just simply changes the composition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, Attorney D'Onofrio, can you go through the rest of the um, charter with it, um, changes? Yeah, I, I'm here, I'm in my car, uh, driving to a meeting in Cheshire. So, um, you know, I, I wasn't expecting that you were looking for me to go through the edits that we went through last night. But if you need me to do that, um, I guess I can do the best I can while I'm driving. All right, thank you. I'll try to give an overview of what we're looking at. And of course, anybody is free to comment on any part of the charter during this hearing. Um, we wanna hear all the information we can tonight. But uh, the main things we're looking at is moving the visiting nurse association from a charter uh, based organization to one covered by an ordinance, not eliminate the visiting nurses, but the way it stands now, the charter requires that they be maintained and it's a very cumbersome financial situation for the town. And we're looking not to eliminate it, but to maintain it and improve it but we wanna move it to where the council can make changes by ordinance instead of a charter change. Um, we just went over to board of education. Uh, we also like to eliminate the town resident requirement for the town manager. I know in the past, a couple of searches for town manager really limited our available candidates having the town resident requirement. So we'd like to change it to a state resident requirement for the town of Berlin. Uh, next thing we're looking at is increasing the uh, amount of money threshold for town bids from $10,000 to $25,000. That would bring us into line with state statute. Uh, with today's prices, when a town hires somebody for over $10,000, it's really not a very big job anymore. So you'd like to move that to 25. And then there's a number of miscellaneous changes in that it's mostly clarifications recommended by staff. Um, I won't go through the tedious details, but those are our main items that this uh, commission's been looking at. Um, I guess from there, I'd be glad to hear people's opinions. Uh, who's first on our speaking list, please? Sorry. Please give your name and address for the record. Uh, Nikki Sambitsky, I'm on 947 Chamberlain Highway, Berlin. Um, I just wanted to give some thoughts on keep, or making the Board of Ed partisan. As a parent, having two young children in the town of Berlin, it helps me to know what party these candidates are affiliated with because I've seen so many agendas at the hands of the left, things like transgenderism, things like equity and CRT and social justice and things that are ultimately damaging for our children. The Board of Ed should have a party affiliation. They're running just like any other candidate or any other position parents need to know these days which party their candidate is affiliated with. In a perfect world, sure. Boards of ads should be nonpartisan because at the heart of it, 
you should be solely focused on the educational good of our children. But sadly, it's not like that today. There's left and there's right, and there's dangerous agendas that are being pushed on our children or snuck in here and there, and they call something else. You know, they're trying to, you know, in essence, put lipstick on a pig and call it something else. It's dangerous agenda. And I'm sad to say that from what I'm seeing, it's, it's the Dems that are pushing it. For me as a parent, I want to know what party these candidates are affiliated with so that I could vote accordingly to safeguard my children because there's not too many ways that we could safeguard our children these days. And if this is one way to safeguard my children, I'd like the opportunity to be able to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the next on the list is um, Gary McGee. Hello, my name is Gary McPhee. Uh, I have to tell you right up front that I do not live in town anymore, but I did live here for 50 years and was a nine year member of the board. May I speak? Of course. Thank you. Uh, as a nine year member and a three year chairman of the Board of Education, I can tell you that I did not know the party affiliation of anybody. And people ran on the board for educational reasons, okay, not for reasons of uh, political aspiration. Too many times uh, political parties, people who wanna be involved in political parties are thrown a bone and they say, well, we'll nominate you for, for the Board of Ed. And if you're electable, then maybe we'll consider you for something else. It would be used as a stepping stone. Uh, we never were concerned with party affiliation of anybody. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, I think you're being requested to consider fixing something it isn't broken it works well uh you know it's like the highway department being asked to plow the roads in july when there's no snow it, you know or uh, it's i'm not going to say it's ridiculous but uh it's it doesn't need to be done it works fine it really does whether it's in closed session or over the phone where ultimately those real decisions are made and they have the public meeting where they do the voting, but you know darn well that the major decisions are made behind the scenes because sometimes people need to air some uh, uh, you know, opinions that they don't want in public, but it works and it works well. It has then and it did then, and I see no reason for it to continue uh, in any other vein. I thank you for your time. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up is Mary Catherine LaRose. I-26 Woodruff Lane in Kensington. Um, I have a little different perspective on um, partisan versus nonpartisan Board of Ed. As I ran for the Board of Education unsuccessfully last year, um, what I found, and I ran hard, I tried, I got out in the neighborhoods, I walked the streets, I left flyers indoors occasionally when I got a chance to, again, with COVID, you had to be careful. If people were out in their yard and they wanted to talk to me, I talked to them. What I found was the stumbling block was everyone I met wanted to know, what, what, what are you? Are, are you Democrat? Are you Republican? Are you conservative? Are you a liberal? They wanted to know for transparency purposes. And here I was, you know, trying to run nonpartisan and just run on my issues. And my issues were, I've been a teacher for 40 something years. And I think I have a good idea of what's good education and what's not so good. And I'm th seeing things in the schools that I don't like. And I want to go back to not just necessarily going back to the way it was, but going back to more common sense education. But, you know, I was really hamstrung by the fact that I wasn't backed by a party. I'd never run for anything before. And so again, if you have a party or even if you wanna run unaffiliated, that's fine. You can go out and get your petition signed. But I mean, if you have someone behind you that can help guide you, because again, a lot of times when you're running for board of education, you may never run for anything before and you may never run for anything else. In that respect, I disagree with um, the man that spoke before me. I don't necessarily think it's in any way, shape or form uh, stepping stone to a higher office. People run because they care about the kids, they care about their kids, or they just care about the kids in town in general, and they are concerned about what's going on in the schools. And I think whether you're a Democrat, a liberal, 
and you say, okay, I have a liberal agenda. I believe in this, that, and the other thing. Or if you're conservative like me and you say, no, I'm a conservative and I believe it should go this way. People should know that. And so that's why I would advocate for a, uh, a board of education where your, your party affiliation is known. Thank you very much. Thank you. Julia Dennis. Hello, my name is Julia Dennis. I reside at 115 Norton Road. Um, I am a proud member of the Board of Education and I am serving my third term. Um, I'm gonna start out with, I'm a teacher. I have three, master, three graduate degrees. I'm a doctoral candidate at Northeastern University. I have a vested interest in education. I'm also a proud Republican and conservative. My husband and I have conservative values and I've won every time I've ran. This year, I actually did not campaign because I was worried about the repercussions that might come because we had people kind of coming after the board and I didn't run and I still won. Um, I am transparent with my views. People know that I'm a Republican. People know that I'm conservative. People know that I support Second Amendment rights. Um, they know where we are. And I, I don't have to hide that, but I also don't have to bring that forth to the Board of Education. I don't have to watch Fox News or read on Facebook, uh, check out Moms for Liberty and push a far right conservative rhetoric. Like we are in 2022, the world is changing whether I like it or not, whether I agree or not, society is changing and I'm not gonna be known as a racist or a homophobe on public record. Um, and so finally, I think politics need to stay out of education. They just need to stay out and that's coming from a Republican myself. Um, and I was a Republican long before COVID and before people started switching their affiliation because they wanted to run for Board of Education. And the last thing I wanna share with you, so there's a lot on book bannings now. And I have this lovely book, this children's book for my son, it's called Johnny the Walrus. And it, it's more satire humor, but, but this book right here is a perfect example of when we bring politics into education. And again, I own this book. I, I kind of find some humor in it. I would not want him to take it out of the house. But the point is, is this is a pushing a far right agenda. I don't support the agenda. I can laugh at it, but there's a far left and a far right. And that's what happens. And then you have books like this and it's just embarrassing. And I don't want our school district to be embarrassed. And I don't want us to have to put put forth an agenda for the kids like that. So uh, that's all I have for you. And um, thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Here's Zerbozo, 158 Elwood Road. I just have a few, few comments pertaining to the charter. Um, and uh, bear with me, I'm a little exhausted because I have a newborn at home. So the first off is, uh, you know, it's a shame that uh, we're moving the VNA into an ordinance uh, based, uh, you know, ruling or what have you. Um, I recognize that there's a lot of language around it and, and we're, we're, we're not technically eliminating it. But I, I mean, really, that's what we're moving for, because if we were going to leave it alone, we'd leave the language the same and it would say we shall fund. And, you know, I just think that we should be forthright with the public that the true intention of this is to, you know, get rid of the VNA because it's hemorrhaging a lot of money. Um, can it be reorganized? Can it be, can it be saved? I would surely hope so, because I think it's a valuable resource to the people in the town. And I think uh, community members really uh, have come to uh, respect it and utilize it. Uh, in regards to the Board of Education, um, there are a lot of interesting points uh, made here today. And, you know, I just kind of want to step back and take a broader view of the charter at large. I don't want to get into far left, far right, yada, yada, yada. Um, I think the Board of Education really should remain partisan. Uh, the town of Berlin has a long history of a nonpartisan Board of Ed, and I find it surprising that this commission wishes to do away with a town tradition that is well respected by many in our community. If this proposal moves forward, the BOE will be controlled by the two town committees, 
and unknown individuals will be appointed to the board from their respective committees. <clears throat> These board members will be beholden to the whim of their committee and committee chair, rather than you, the parents, and the people of the community. This is a sharp contrast to our current process where parents who want to get involved can simply petition on and be on a level playing field. Members of the community who get involved for the sake of wanting to do what is right and serve their community. I also take issue with the fact that I hear this phrase parroted over and over again as I watch these um, charter revision meetings in reference to the BOE and to the Board of Finance, to be fair. This issue, or uh, the, the phrase thrown around is, well, let the people vote on it. Well, that's exactly what the people did in 2016 after we had a nonpartisan BOE for decades. And the people said, we wanna keep it nonpartisan. So how can we now come here and ignore the will of the people, rip open the charter and say, you know what? We didn't, we didn't like the will of the people back in 2016. So we're just gonna disregard it and try to cram it through again. That's not right. That's disrespectful to the people of this town. And in terms of nonpartisanship, I think we're all being a little myopic. We're gonna desecrate a nonpartisan board that has worked fine because we're allowing partisan politics to get involved. Sure, now you might say, well, the Democrats are doing X, Y, and Z and da, 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 da. Well, what happens when the very people that you don't want on the board get on the board because they're Democrat and it's a 6-3 majority? The way it stands now, you can run whoever you want. You can run people who are Republican or Democrat. I don't think there's any law or any rule that says you're nonpartisan, that you can't walk around your neighborhood and go, hey, hey, Peter, what are you? You're running for the BOE. What the heck are you? Well, you know, I'm an unaffiliated or I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat. I think that changing this entire way we run the Board of Ed that's been this way for decades just to push some type of partisan agenda and not see the the long game and see that the tables can shift at any any will is ridiculous and insulting to the people of the town. Thank you. Peter, just for clarification, I think you said when you opened that you're for the partisan, you want it to remain nonpartisan, right? Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Samuel Maglio, 78 Hickory Hill Road. In 2016, I was on Charter Vision. I voted for a partisan board of education. And I thought it was a good idea. And I, in a way, I still think it's a good idea. But I've got to support a nonpartisan, see what's going on now. But I think the far right is trying to overreach and take over with this agenda by saying, you know, we don't, we're afraid of CRTs. We're afraid of social injustice. And that's not being taught in the Berlin school system. I know parents, there's a certain group of parents that are going around town and saying that is being taught. I know for a fact it's not being taught. And I think we should just take a back seat, take a deep breath, and keep the Board of Education the way it is. You know, you have a lot of mom and dads that want to run for the Board of Education. If the far right wants to run, they could go out and get a petition. They could run, they could campaign against some make believe agenda that the Berlin Board of Ed has. And if they get on, they get on. They have two of their members on right now. And those two members have done a great job. So I don't see what the problem is, but to have the far right to try to overreach. In 2016, it was a different time. And people voted to keep it that way. And I think, it's worked for the town. It's always worked for the town. It will always, we've always had an educational system in this town that we are proud of. So why mess with it? Why destroy our educational system? Why, I, I just don't understand. I mean, we're in the 21st century. We've, we're training our kids to move out into college. College education is a very competitive field. I, my family has educators. They're either, they're, they're Democrat, Republicans, they're conservative, liberal, but they, they haven't, they believe in educating kids. I've got, I've got a, two sons that just, they've been out of college for four years now, maybe six years, the, the oldest. And I can tell you, if you go there, it's competitive. And if we hold our kids back with this far right agenda, our kids are not going to succeed in a college unless you send them to a far right university. Some far, I don't even know if we have a far right university in this country, but let's keep the board of ed. Let's, 
And I'm going to give you a good example. I was on the board of finance and I see people shaking their heads. So I was going to go there, but I'm going to go there now. I was on the board of finance. I think I did a great job on the board of finance. I think I did an excellent job on the board of finance. I supported education, voted for lower tax increase. But my disadvantage was that I was an independent thinker. I didn't kiss the ring of the party chair. I didn't kiss the mayor's ring. I was independent. So when it was time for me to get nominated, you know what they say? We're not going to nominate you because you didn't follow the program. I will never follow the program. I'm an independent thinker. I don't follow the program. I, I'm my own person. And so that's what's going to happen when you run for the Board of Education. It's going to happen on the Republican side. It's going to happen on the Democrat side. If they disagree, they will not nominate you. You've either got to follow the liberal agenda or the conservative agenda. And that's not how we should educate our kids in this town. Thank you. Good evening, Jim Simon, 62 Vivian Drive. Up here speaking tonight as the town's fire administrator. We'll be talking about section 6.9, the fire department. Um, I sent in a request or a uh, suggestion that there's two, two parts. First part was to separate the fire marshal from the fire department, which that happened. The second part was to remove the word volunteers from the fire department itself. Uh, we all know that volunteerism across the nation um, is a downward slide. We also know that the demographics of the Berlin are changing with uh, multiple story housing uh, going in, condos going in, all kinds of things are happening. I would hate to see that the town's back be put against the wall in the event that it needed to, and I'm not advocating for a paid fire department, but in the event that it needed to hire paid firefighters to cover for this. And I think by just rewording that a little bit, taking that volunteer out of there, you would be protecting yourself. Yes, we, we anticipate that the four companies will remain where they are now for a long future, but Peter can't tell you that. You know, in 1986, when the ambulance corps closed, we, nobody knew, saw that coming and we had to scramble. If we leave this in there, and in, it says volunteers in there, are we gonna go open the charter again just to protect the citizens? If we just maybe change some wording in there, we'll be fine. Thank you. Hi, Nep. Your um, price is on the computer on Zoom. Ms. Price? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, I, I am speaking on behalf of myself and my husband, Chris Barlow, 15 Overhill Drive, Berlin. And I just uh, wanna say why we are against a partisan board of ed. So as a black family who moved to Berlin three years ago, we were fully aware that we were moving to a predominantly white town. Part of why we moved here was because of the school system, especially since our uh, middle school child, he has special needs. The faculty and the school administrators at McGee have been nothing but helpful and welcoming and we've not personally witnessed or been made aware of any negative actions or climate as it relates to our son. That being said, we did start to notice a number of negative incidents and intolerant racial symbols connected to the school system. And this is a story many of you have probably heard uh, both of us say, but uh, one morning in October on a walk in 2020, we saw a uh, blackface doll in the Walgreens, uh, near Walgreens on Farmington Avenue that was created by the Berlin Upbeat and um, we sent an email to the superintendent and the director of Upbeat. And while uh, Mr. Bignini had the display removed immediately and then invited us to join the newly formed Social Justice and Equity Committee, that optimism didn't last because the committee was unilaterally dismantled on a partisan basis. So let's face facts. Berlin is a predominantly conservative town and making the board partisan will make it more so. 
while I understand <clears throat> that some parents may not agree that Berlin should ha even have a social justice and equity, com equity committee, by dismantling it, the town has effectively censored and silence voices and perspectives. It effectively means that only certain viewpoints are considered valid and one narrative is considered American. I recently sat in and observed a working session of the board uh, that is seeking to reconstitute the committee, but in a watered down form. The consensus was that the Berlin school system should strive for a safe environment for all students, one where the sameness is emphasized and bullying minimized. But how is that possible if the diverse backgrounds, identities, and lived heritage of all students is not understood by faculty, students, and administrators? <clears throat> there was a concern that descriptive terms like racism, segregation, slavery, lesbian, gay, and transsexual, all scary buzzwords to be avoided. But how can students and parents learn to be tolerant if they're never educated on these various concepts? A partisan board of ed will surely stamp out discussion and God forbid curriculum about such concepts. Again, that means that certain perspectives are not considered valid, not considered American. The growing viewpoint among the conservatives is that students shouldn't be made to feel bad about their background, skin color and sexual orientation. And that's an admirable goal, but from whose perspective? I feel bad that uh, actual high, the actual high school club felt it was okay to display a gollywog in front of Walgreens. Where, what are Berlin educators teaching our children was showcasing a known racist symbol, an effigy in blackface in front of a store where black people are known to shop seems very partisan and sends a message that black visitors and tax paying black home and business owners are not welcome. While this, dis what disappoints me the most is that the posture and climate goes against Berlin's own history. The Berlin, Berlin Historical Society's prized exhibit is the Wide Awakes Lantern from 1860 that was a symbol of the abolitionist movement and efforts to end slavery by electing Abraham Lincoln. Back then, townspeople like Milo Hotchkiss used their homes to shelter enslaved people on their road to freedom. In fact, last week, the mayor signed a proclamation honoring the home, and he'll dedicate it this weekend at our inaugural Juneteenth celebration at the Berlin Peck Library, which, of course, we hope to see you all stop by and attend. So a nonpartisan board pres preserves the Berlin heritage and allows for all perspectives to be honored and celebrated. There's rich history in our own town that welcomes people of all backgrounds. Our Board of Education should follow in those footsteps and not be allowed to stamp out the views that they don't like as partisan foy. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Chair, that concludes who has signed up. Do you want me to ask anyone on Zoom if they would like to? Yes, please. please. And then you can go back to the audience here. Please. Okay. If anybody's on Zoom and you'd like to speak, is on mute. Kate, I would if I may. Okay, Tim Oaks. Thank you, uh, Tim Oaks, six, 631 Spruce Brook Road, Berlin. Uh, driving from Danbury in the car, I uh, want to um, thank everybody for their time this evening, Attorney Mednick for your uh, summary of things. Uh, at the top, I appreciate getting caught up a little bit. The, the big question that I have or the takeaway from what I've heard over the past 30 minutes or so is a lot of these changes that we're proposing to the charter are a result of state statute, language cleanup, et cetera. The Board of Ed uh, changes, I haven't heard anything from anyone as to why we want to do this other than we want to make this change because we think it's better for people. We think there's confusion, et cetera. There's no compelling reason. Um, for me as an unaffiliated elector and uh, petitioning candidate over three terms of a board boardsmanship and board membership, I have been able to convey my position to the constituents of Berlin as to what I stand for and why I was passionate about education in Berlin schools. 
I had no reason to bring the political aspect of it to that table. It's not about my political aspirations or tendencies or leanings. It's about what's best for the students and the nonpartisan aspect of that is always at the table. There are plenty of things that I want to spend zillions of dollars on. There are plenty of things that I don't think we should spend a dime on. And my uh, needle will go back and forth based on how well or how poorly I think our administrators have formulated the plan of attack that they have on a particular topic. It's certainly a difficult area because things are constantly changing. We just had a, a lively debate last night on uh, various topics and trying to figure out when we will be beyond this. And the reality is, is that it's, it's not anything we're ever going to get beyond. And even if we do start to get out in front of it, there will be plenty of other things uh, coming down the road that the Board of Education, the Town Council, the Board of Finance, anybody will have to deal with. So it's an ever-changing uh, landscape and future of what we have to deal with. But as, as many have said, the nonpartisanship, I think, brings the purest opportunity for everyone to sit at that table and determine what is best for the students vis-a-vis -vis the taxpayer. So again, I, I question what the motivation is here because I have not heard anything from this revision commission on that reason, like the other items being driven by statute or existing language to be cleaned up, et cetera. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the Zoom that would like to address the um, meeting here? Kate? Yes, Joan Veely. Yeah, all right, thank you. I was having problems unmuting. Um, my name is Joan Veely. I reside at 1424 Orchard Road here in Berlin. And can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I just wanna talk briefly um, in, in uh, respect to the registrars of voters. And I've listened to the arguments and what people's comments have to be about the Board of Ed. And to that point, I would say that as a registrar, uh, my counterpart and I, um, we handle a lot of phone calls and a lot of angry voters who come in and will ask us for the party affiliation for the members that are running for the Board of Ed. And we have to basically stay in a neutral ground arena and we will tell them we do not know, but these are the candidates and we urge them to do research or whatever. Um, the voters have um, become very frustrated with the registrars and they um, it, it get to a point where it's very uh, disturbing to us because they'll just throw their hands up and say, hey, listen, if you can't tell me, I'm just not gonna vote for anyone. And, and that I think is unfair to the voter. Um, so I'm not sure what you'll do with this category, but I'm just gonna weigh in as a registrar and um, just to give you that bit of feedback, and we receive a lot of phone calls around election time, and we re re receive a lot of face on, you know, people who come to our office looking for answers. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else on Zoom that would like to address the commission? Uh, anyone else in the audience like to speak now that didn't sign up? Paul? Hi, um, <clears throat> I'm Paul Argazi. I live at 339 Reservoir Road. Uh, charter revision is somewhat of a hobby of mine, I guess. I've been involved in charter revision for over 30 years. Uh, I was chairman of the 2016 commission and vice chairman of the 1995 commission. And uh, I like to see it work. Uh, try to keep my comments as brief as I can, but to, in order to help the committee, I did prepare a charter revision history, which covers everything from 1973. You might find this interesting because uh, you can see how these same issues keep coming up over the years. If I may pass this out to the members. 
Um, <clears throat> as a lot of you know, uh, you know, when it comes to charter revision for you know 200 years, the town operated under the uh, Board of Finance town meeting or a board of selectmen form of government. The town meeting was our legislative body. In 1994, by 55 votes, we made a very radical change to the council manager form of government. I think there's a substantial amount of people in town that uh, still think that that was a bad idea and uh, you know, find the whole idea of a town manager kind of offensive that we can't run our own town. I'm not here to advocate for that, but in 2016, I think the Charter Commission brought some of the checks and balances back that we lost in the 1994 charter. Uh, and I think right now it's a good compromise. I think we have the town manager, we have uh, the Board of Finance, which is a, a really a bipartisan group that uh, is a check on spending. We added some of the uh, checks and balances back, such as the budget referendum, a second referendum, voting on bonding, which we never had under this form of government. Um, uh, you know, a three, a three and three member board of finance and, and other checks and balances too. Uh, I think we're at a good point is what I'm saying. Yes, I'd rather personally have a full-time mayor. I'm not here advocating that. I'm sure there's a lot of people in town that want to get rid of the board of finance and some other things that we did to kind of bring back the checks and balances and have no checks and balances like we did after the 95 charter. But I think, I think we're really at a good point. And you know, my overall point really is, you know, don't mess with it too much. Um, there's a couple of things apparently that need changing and stick with that. Stick with those two or three limited things, have specific questions on those things and let the people vote up, up or down. Uh, the VNA, you know, that was a problem last time. We looked at that. We decided not to touch that. Um, you know, just, uh, my, my thought on the VNA is it works very well. We have some things in Berlin that are a little bit different than other towns. And I never had a problem with that as long as it was working. The VNA loses a lot of money, but so does the recreation department. You know, they lose a lot of money and we all know the Board of Education loses a lot of money. These agencies are not supposed to break even. They're supposed to provide really good services to our, to our residents and it's, you know, it's hard just to get rid of them. And if you if you have an ordinance, what you're doing, as one of the previous speakers said, is you're, you're kind of moving toward getting rid of it and privatizing it. Maybe that's a good idea, maybe it's not. Let the people vote on that specific issue. The town manager resident issue, this comes up every time. Um, one thing you need to know is that when charter revision was passed, the League of Women Voters really pushed this issue that the town manager would be one of us. And I, I still have the, the flyer, which I should have brought, but I tend to save things like this. And they said, the town manager is gonna be in the Lions Club. He's gonna be in the Kiwanis Club. He's gonna be a taxpayer. He's gonna be just like the mayor, except he's gonna have all these advanced degrees. And as soon as we got that passed, everybody started to wanna change it and let the town manager live out of town. Well, I being on the council, I understand the advantages of that, the 2016 a committee voted six to one to put that issue on the ballot in 2016. I was the one who voted against it, but it was a majority six to one. That went to vote and that was defeated. Also, you'll see in the information I give you, in 2007, there was a charter commission appointed for one reason, and that was to let the people vote on the manager living in and out of town. That was defeated. So twice it's gone to referendum and twice that issue has been defeated. And I think people will defeat that again. I think people wanna keep the town manager in town, even if that's not practical. Pra practical, yes. Um, another thing which was talked about was the increase in the dollar amounts for certain things for um, uh, waiving of bids, et cetera. We had a lot of that in our 2016 proposal that was in question five, you know, sort of the non-controversial items. That whole thing was defeated. So those were not increased. Certainly you wanna increase those, make those as a separate question. Um, regarding the Board of Education, um, I was a big advocate for uh, question number three, I believe it was uh, for the Board of Education, uh, making it partisan. I'll tell you why I felt that uh, having people with a little bit more experience 
who had been serving on other boards, perhaps serve on the Board of Education, might make it so the board actually sets policy instead of just listening to the superintendent. My father served for about 12 years on the Board of Education, including chairman. And he said, really, frankly, a lot of times you don't even need the board. The superintendent does everything and we just go along with it. And that's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be elected officials giving direction to whether it's the town manager or the uh, uh, school superintendent. Now, having said that, we just had a vote on this six years ago. And, you know, it took what? 50, 70, 100 years to have the first vote. Now we're going to have another vote six years later. Look, the, the people who did not want a partisan board of education won that election fair and square. It was not a, a, a confusing question in the least. There were all kinds of flyers on this left and right. And of the four substantive changes in 2016, three of them passed and that one didn't. So you, know, you might want to think about that because you're putting something very controversial on board. You're going to get everybody out. There's going to be all kinds of paper, uh, you know, flyers and stuff. And maybe this board isn't, you know, shouldn't be doing that. Maybe you should just fix the things that really need fixing. And I do, I do believe that the Board of Ed needs fixing, but maybe not so soon after the last vote. Um, <clears throat> I really believe that... Uh, <clears throat> Charter revision should be fair. It shouldn't be a situation where, you know, the Republican Party gets in and appoints a charter commission and changes the charter to help them. And then the Democrats get in and they say, oh, the heck with that. We're going to change it back. And now we're going to win every election. It's not like that. It's got to be something done extremely rare, just like our Constitution. It's difficult to change the Constitution and it should be difficult to change the charter because we all have to live under this. And like I said, when I started, we, st we, in my opinion, we brought that balance back in 2016, and I think we're at a good point. So I'd hate to see this become like a, a biennial thing where each party appoints a charter commission and we have these wars all over again, because I don't think that's healthy for the town. Um, thank you. George, please. George Miller, 1231 Orchard Road. Um, I was also a member of the 2016 Charter Commission. And I'm currently a member of the Board of Finance. Just a comment about the VNA, and I hear what you, Paul is saying and so forth, but I think there is a fairly compelling reason to at least make some minor changes to it and, and there needs to be some option here, just so people are aware. The board, the board of yeah, VNA is losing approximately a million dollars a year, a million dollars a year, and they've tried to do things. Now, as a, as a VNA, when we talk about we need that to be supporting the town of Berlin and so forth, they have branched out. They now support more than just the town of Berlin. So we are paying taxpayer dollars from citizens of Berlin to provide services to non-Berlin residents also. I think we need to, you know, figure it out and what really is needed in town for the DNA. Uh, one of the big issues was the visiting nurses and trying to compete with Harford Healthcare and Yale and Trinity and all these other organizations that are massive multi-billion dollar organizations. And we got our little Berlin VNA. I think there are a lot of ways that they can add a tremendous amount of value to the, to the people of the town of Berlin being care managers and so forth and getting them the right resources they need, but I don't know if, if the day of trying to be all to everybody is, is actually working very, very well. Um, with regard to the Board of Education, I was a proponent of it before. Just make a couple of comments. One is that fear is not fact. I think there's a lot of fear about what might happen, but I don't hear a lot of fact that it's actually gonna happen. So there's a lot of fear going on. Um, I would feel better about our current situation being nonpartisan if someone could come to me and say Berlin stands number one. We're only one of what, two or if even, I know we're, we're two. So one of two in the entire state that, that has a nonpartisan board of education, we're grandfathered in by prior law, uh, 
towns are not able to go but nonpartisan on their own now. They tried back in 2009 to change the law, unsuccessful. But um, I would like to hear that Berlin is head and shoulders above everybody else and the quality of education that they give to everybody else. And that's not the case. The other aspect of what happens and maybe a reason why we should rethink it. I've been here for 18 years. I wasn't born here, but I've lived in town for 18 years. I've gone through, what does that mean? Nine local elections. And I can tell you the vast majority of them, I never knew any of the people whatsoever not having been born here. I don't know any of these people. The amount of information that's given to them out there is very, very sketchy. If they don't have the money to do it. Um, oh, most of the time, I didn't even vote for Board of Education, because I won't just check off a name. I won't vote for people I don't know. Also, there have been multiple years when there weren't even enough candidates to run to fill the seats that were there. I think if you have parties endorsing and bringing people, you're going to bring more people to the table. You're going to have more choice on who to get. We'll be able to get maybe, maybe the absolute best people in here for the education of our children and not just whoever happens to petition and get on, because there's multiple years where three ran and, and three were elected. There are other years when two ran for three slots and then they were appointed. So there are some issues with the way the current system works. I'm sorry. Anyone else? Hi, uh, Sandy Capola, 66 Heritage Drive. Um, I'm here to really talk on two points, one of them being the VNA and the other Board of Education. Um, I'll start with the VNA. Um, my career since college has been in healthcare. So I've been in healthcare, I hate saying this, but it's over 30 years, I'll leave it at that. Um, and in the last you know, 10 years, even five years, there have been major changes in the healthcare uh, system, whether it's been changes in technology, whether it's been changes in procedures um, being done, but you're also seeing um, quite aggressively two large healthcare systems in the state really buying all your small mom and pop single practices, buying all your durable medical equipment practices. Um, so your, your choices are, are getting smaller. However, what that's also doing it is it is giving them the ability to purchase things for less prices. Um, you know, to do some case management across areas, uh, across different lines. Um, the thing that is beneficial to that is by having that behind them, um, you know, especially now what's happened over the past couple of years, I mean, you can't touch a nurse for under 50 to $60 an hour. Um, you know, as, as was stated, the VNA is losing about a million dollars a year in town, um, and they're not just treating in town. Is there, is there a service that they can provide? Yes, I think there is. Do I have that answer? No, but I don't think the traditional VNA model that we have will work any longer being supported by the town. Um, I think the charter change to give the, the board um, and the town council a bit more flexibility to what they can do, um, maybe give some options, whether it's for partnering, only doing certain services, I think this change would allow them to do that. Um, I don't think it's a lack of trying by the commission members that have been on the VNA commission because I think they've tried tried a lot of different things. I just think honestly, it's a sign of the times. Uh, so I would be in in uh, favor of the changes for the VNA. Uh, regarding the Board of Education, um, as was stated, and I don't want to restate certain things, but we are only one of two towns in the state that have nonpartisan. Um, you know, as it was also stated, it's not 2016 any longer. And I understand that we did go through uh, recommending that change back then. However, in the past couple of years, many things have changed in education. Um, I think with having the pandemic over the past couple of years, different ways schooling was done. I think parents got more involved. They were seeing more of the education. And, you know, I think that they have a right to know if they're voting for someone on, on the Board of Education, what their party affiliation is. Um, being former chair for the Republican Party, uh, Republican Town Council in, in town, um, I would often get questions as, who are the Republicans supporting? Who's, who's an R on the party? What, you know, what are their views? Um, and I would always say to them, you know, we're a nonpartisan town. I cannot advise you of that. If you have questions of the candidates, please go and ask the candidates. Um, you know, I could give them my personal opinion. 
However, you know, when people are going into that voting booth, I think they have a right to know whether someone leans more, you know, whether they, their values are more democratic or more Republican. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I think both parties always have the best intent of the children uh, in mind. Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I, but I do think that as a citizen of the town, you should have the right to know what someone's, I don't know if you want to call it quote unquote belief is, but usually if you register as a Republican or a Democrat, you have a lot of the same tendencies of those parties. Um, and I think as a parent or a citizen in town, you should have the right and the ability to make that choice and know who you were voting for. Um, I also think it would allow the, uh, the parties in town, as was stated, you know, someone who is signing the petition um, and wanting to run for Board of Education, well, they might not have, you know, all the funds to go buy signs to put in ads, etc. Um, you know, whether or not they were endorsed by the, by the party or put up by one of them, if they get their petition out and they're a Republican, well, maybe they can go to the party and say, hey, you know, can you help me? Can you help me raise funds? Can you help me buy some signs? Um, so I think that would also make the playing field a little bit more fair as far as the candidates desire as well. Um, I think I hit on the big parts. I don't want to take up anyone's um, more time and thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Anyone else? Laura Cordeville, 19 Timberwood Road in Berlin. This is actually my husband's statement, but he didn't want to get up and read it, so I'm going to do it. Ah, changed it a little bit. Um, we have two children in the Berlin Public Schools, and we would both like to voice our very strong op opposition to making the Board of Education partisan. I've heard no compelling evidence at all today or prior to today that this change is at all necessary and it would even address any kind of problem that exists. And I've been watching all kinds of things that have been happening in the Board of Ed. I've had interactions all along with them. I think they're doing a fantastic job and I don't see any reason why we need to change it. What is the point of that? If it's not broke, why are we trying to fix it? And other people have said that tonight too. In this type of time of hyper-partisanship, we need to make sure that the members of the Board of Education are acting in the best interests of our children and not in the interests of any political party, because this is about education, not about politics. Political winds shift. Deliberately injecting politics is completely unnecessary and should have no bearing on a child's education. I want we both want our children to have a diverse and well-rounded education. This includes learning about a wide range of topics and points of view, not just the ones that are approved and aligned with the ideology of the, part, of the party that won the last election. Thank you. Anyone else? Last call. Um. I don't want to make this a debate. Can you make it real quick, please? It's Mary Catherine LaRose, 26 Woodruff Lane, again. Um, I don't know why people feel that uh, being part of a party means that you are, all of a sudden one party is racist or one party is closed-minded or one party wants, it, it isn't about that. Being, being a member of a party means that you will have backing and support. Not it, and once you get on the board, if you get on the board, it is all about the kids. It's always about the kids and it's always about their best education. And people have been on the board. You can call it nonpartisan. I don't care. It's really not. Let's face it. Um, and once you get on the board, you work with the other people on the board. You don't, you don't have to, you know, it's not like, well, I'm going to work with you because you're on my, in my party, but I'm not going to work with you because you're not in my, you're not going to work with you. So, I, and I really, I just felt one of the people that spoke tonight really was insulting in saying, you know, the ultra right. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, we have people in the Republican party 
of all range, and I'm sure you do in the Democrat party. I was a Democrat before I was a Republican. So I'm just going to say, you know, let's stop all that. You only have two towns in the whole state that are trying to do this. It's really hard to run for something when you have no one behind you. You just have yourself. So let's do it with our party support. If you want to run unaffiliated, you have the, the ability to do that. Thank you. Any other quick comments? Well, hearing none, I guess. Say something about this. Is there anyone else on Zoom that wants to talk? Okay. Um, once again, I want to thank everybody. We got a lot of good information tonight, a lot of good points of view. Um, I guess we'll close the public comments. Anything from the member? Second. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you so much. <laughs>